This program is intended for mature audiences. Parental discretion is advised. Some of my least favorite animals. Yo, hold it. You've just logged on to Dee Dee's place. This page is hosted by Yahoo Geo. Follow the little man to your own free home page. I'm pretty sure that's not going to work. Here you will find all my pages. Cat's page. My tarantula's page. Nope. This Crested Club site, owned by P. Maruk, Crested Club Web Ring. <laughs> those ugly little dogs. Spiritual Chinese Cresteds. Saddlebred Kids, a website for kids and saddlebreds, presented by Renaissance Farm. Welcome to our website. Four children of our own grew up knowing how wonderful the American Saddlebred Horse is. We produce this website in hopes that other children who love horses will come to know this breed as well. Watch for a new issue here every three months. This is volume one, number four online. The American Saddlebred Horse is a man-made breed created to provide a comfortable riding horse capable of long and strenuous work days. This breed is necessarily athletic. It is also a calm and capable horse that doesn't bore easily and that loves to work with people. Many people like the saddlebred horse. You may have seen the Canadian actor William Shatner in the movie Star Trek Generations. Here he is, riding, shown riding his American saddlebred mare, Great Bells of Fire. Mr. Shatner is the owner of Bell Rave Farm. That's pronounced Bell Rave, by the way in Kentucky, and is well-known breeder of saddlebred horses. In 1994, Mr. Shatner rode I Prefer Montana, a half-brother to this mayor, in the Pasadena Rose Bowl Parade. Mr. Shatner was the Grand Marshal of the parade that year. The theme, appropriately, was Fantastic Adventure. Other media star American saddlebreds include the famous Mr. Ed and the horse that played Flicka in the wonderful movie classic My Friend Flicka. Saddlebred horses can be used for anything you would want a horse to do. Here are some pictures of saddlebred horses being used. Nope. If you have a picture of you and your saddlebred horse you would like to show us, send our editor a note. But there are no pictures of saddlebred horses being used. Chihuahuas, the petite sombreros. Aww, we can look at the chihuahuas and little sombreros. That's too bad. Welcome to Camp Mousekita. The first camp for mice on the web. Mice adopted from the mouse pad are invited to spend all our part of the summer at our camp. Shell moose that it does not exist. Lie down. Welcome to my little space on the web. You don't need any more food tubs. I don't think she's starving. Links, a collection of links which I've gathered in hopes of making this growing community more aware of our world. This link goes to the new 
Fast pick gallery. All picks are in text link, so it's a lot faster. Hi, I'm Tony Umble. Hi, everyone. This page is dedicated to Brian Literal. I wish to thank him for all that he has done, not just for me, but for the rest of the world. He has inspired me to keep on through all my troubles and sorrows. He has made me see that there are real gentlemen left in the world. Then when he started his foundation for children with heart defects that can't afford insurance, I cried because I wished something like that was around when my little brother needed his heart surgery. So, Brian, I thank you for all you are and for all you do. Keep strong for us with love. Anthony Lee Umble. I am now a four-time award winner. Check it out inside. This page is dedicated to a man who is better than all others, Brian Luttrell. He is one of the ever-so-dreamy Backstreet Boys. The following link will take you to different Brian galleries. There is even one that will tell you a lot about Brian's life. Enjoy. So, stats on him. Favorite actress, Sandra Bullock. Favorite music, Boys to Men and Bobby Brown. Brian LaShell fan page. Oh, God. Okay. Kimberly's Dragons. One of my greatest passions is reading. I enjoy a variety of subjects, both fiction and nonfiction, and a vast amount of authors. Two of my favorites are Charles DeLint and Mercedes Lackey. A few of my other hobbies that I'm rather fond of are fairies, plants, flowers, dragons, and frogs. The graphics on my page are not my own. They were done by other artists with much care. So here are some pictures of dragons. And that's it. Carrot finches. Welcome to my page. Climb down the forest canopy with me, okay? The parrot finches. Okay. Also known as blue. Okay, so this is just information about parrot finches. Ooh, pretty. Purity test. The drug knowledge purity test. Oh boy, I'm about to incriminate myself. Check all boxes for what your answer is. Yes, the submit button is at the bottom. Purity tests used to be like super popular back in the day. Do you know at least three terms for Mary Jane? No. More than four? Absolutely not. More than six? No. Have you ever invented a name for it? Uh, no. Who would do that? Have you ever smoked the Mary Jane? No. Have you ever gone somewhere important, e.g. class or work, Wallstone? Absolutely not. It's irresponsible. Have you ever driven Wallstone? That's even more irresponsible. Have you ever bought the Mary Janes? No. Have you ever bought more than half? No. More than one. Have you ever grown the Mary Jane? Uh, n uh, no. Actually, no. Have you ever sold it? Uh, no. Drug dealers do that. That's terrible. You shouldn't do that. Ha do you own a smoking device? Absolutely not. More than three? No. Is one or more of them a bong? Absolutely not. Over two feet. Uh, no, but I, I know someone that has one. Is 420 your favorite time of day? I think that's kind of stupid. Did you understand that question? Yes, I did. But you know what? I'm not like, I'm not into that, that whole like stoner culture thing. That's not really my thing. <laughs> I, I'm not into that. But yes, I do understand the question. Have you ever hotboxed a car or a room? No. What does that mean? Have you ever eaten hash pot brownies? Ugh. Actually, you know what? I am not into edibles. That's like not, not my thing. I just, I don't, I don't really like them. Have you ever made them? Um, no, again, that's not my thing. 
Have you ever made a pipe or bong from something not intended for that use? Uh, that's something that, like, you should really be careful about if you're doing that, no matter what you're smoking out of it. Um, because a lot of stuff, you don't want to really burn aluminum and breathe it in. That's really bad for your lungs. Uh, have you ever smoked the Mary Jane on a school campus? No. Oh, no. Do you know what a carb is? Yeah, it's a thing your body burns for energy. A G, absolutely not. An O, uh, that's what your boyfriend gives you if he's really good, right? Do you own a scale? Actually, no. Have you ever seen magic mushrooms? What are those? Have you ever eaten them? Absolutely not. Have you ever bought LSD? No, I don't do that. In a vial, do you know another name for LSD? Uh, no? Have you ever tripped? I don't mean fallen down in public. Absolutely not. At school? No. Like, seriously, I don't do that. Around your parents? <laughs> if ever. Do you think... Hey, chill out, Moose. Do you think Jimi Hendrix music sounds like an LSD trip? That's... Whatever, I guess. Have you ever had a bad trip? Uh, not really. One that landed you in the hospital? No, I don't. I don't. Have you tripped more than five times? Never. More than ten? Absolutely not. Have you ever had a trip that affected the rest of your life? Okay, one of my friends one time said that she, while she was doing uh, hallucinogens, she figured out, like, the prince in her in her mind, figured out, like, the algorithm, the principal understanding of math for the universe, she said. Um, then, of course, forgot it the second she was sober again. Uh, I... I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I guess. Have you ever rolled? Uh, once, a really long time ago. Yeah, I know what that means. You can... No, do you know what that means? Yes, I know what that means. Have you done any falling dress on crutches? LSD... <laughs> Ecstasy candy flip. Have you ever snorted ecstasy? That just seems like a bad idea to me. Have you ever injected? Oh, no, I don't do that. I don't know. I'm like, I don't care about needles. I'm not scared of them. But I don't know. Uh, once it gets to the point where you're, like, injecting stuff for recreational purposes, that's, you know, my line is before that. That's not my line, but that's, like, way over my line. Do you get an evil girl when you see an ad for E, the Entertainment Network? Ah, 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 ah. When you see a box of special K. <laughs> okay, I get it because I laugh for that one. But, no, like, when I was younger for a while, I'd be like, hey, special K. But, you know. Do you know why I asked you that? Have you ever taken ketamine? That is not, um, like, uh, uh, oh, God, my brain just totally exploded on me. Sedatives are not my thing. I don't like that. I don't like feeling sedated. It's just, like, that's not a cool feeling to me. It makes me really anxious. But I do actually know a friend, I have a friend who was in a clinical trial for uh, ketamine as a treatment for, uh, treatment resistant depression, and she said it worked really well for her. Um, but no, I don't, I don't do ketamine. PCP, oh god, I have heart problems. Snore cocaine. <laughs> Again, I have heart problems. This is, these stimulant things are not for me. Have you seen people snore cocaine? You know, that's actually a really good question. Um... I've, like, I've been at parties and stuff where people have been doing it, but I don't think I've ever actually seen anybody, like, do it. <laughs> been around people who are tripping. No, never. Rolling, absolutely not. Candy flipping. PCP. Oh, see that? I don't hang around these people. PCP, heroin, crack. That is, like, not... I don't want to be around those people. Uh, are you addicted? No. <laughs> Have you ever taken more than three recreational drugs when I absolutely not? More than five? That's a bit much for me. I'm not that much of a party girl. Have you ever blacked out from drug use? Uh, I that once, a, again, a really, really, really long time ago, and I think it was the first time I smoked pot. I got really high and sort of like, I kind of woke up sort of came back to myself in the middle of a situation with my boyfriend, who I'm now married. I mean, it was fine. It wasn't, like, anything bad. But I do remember we were kind of, like, being all intimate, and then all of a sudden we were, like, in a different room, and, you know, more of my clothes were off, and I was just like, what? 
but that was, you know, years and years and years and years ago. And I was, you know, with my boyfriend slash fiance who I trust intimately. Uh, so, uh, anyway, have you ever overdosed? Mm -mm. No, I don't really do stuff that you can overdose on. Have you ever been caught under the influence? Um, yeah, I guess. By the cops. Have you ever been caught in possession? No, I don't carry stuff around me. By the cops. Are you intoxicated right now? No! Do you find it difficult to go a whole weekend without drugs? I don't care about that. Have you ever taken prescription medication that wasn't yours? Okay, I've got to answer yes on that, but the caveat is, um, two or three times in my entire life. I've gone to a party or to a friend's house or whatever, and I've gotten an extremely bad back. I've been in a lot of pain, uh, and they've given me, like, a Norco or a Lortab or something. Uh, not to get high, but because I wanted to be able to enjoy the party and I wasn't feeling very well. So, have you taken OTC medication to get high? Uh, again, years and years and years and years ago, uh, I have done that. Did it work? Eh sort of have you ever faked an illness to get medicaid no i don't do that have you ever sold possessions to get money for drugs no sold yourself no have you ever been in rehab no have you ever been to jail for drug related offenses sold anything besides mary jane sold drugs of any kind of school campus carried drugs on campus well i live in a college town it's kind of not have you ever sold an inert substances <laughs> drugs Oh, God, no, but I would. <laughs> if someone came up and tried to buy drugs off me, I would I would give them something that was not drugs. Have you ever woken up and not known where you were? No. Not known who you were? Hmm. Have you ever had sexual activity? It doesn't have to be actual sex. Well, on LSD, no. Well, on ecstasy? Well, stone? No, never do that. Have you ever taken a drug test? I've, God, I've taken job interviews. Of course you get drug tests and job interviews. Did you fail? Um, no. Have you ever taken something just to see what it would do? <coughs> I'm going to say a cautious yes on that, but that would have been again a really, really, really long time ago. Have you tripped while outdoors? That's actually pretty fun. Have you ever done knife it? No, you know what that one is. Do you feel the need to cut a line? Ew, no. All right, so now I'm going to take a while. I guess this isn't actually going to give me, no. But I guess we could go back and, like, go through my purity test. I'm, I'm, meh. I'm, I'm not, not a super drug person. Not my thing. But I have, like I said, I have heart problems. I've got a lot of medical problems. Um, and when you have a lot of <laughs> medical problems, you really shouldn't experiment with drugs too much. So I assume that these were a bunch of pictures of snowflakes, but it's this little broken image thing falling down, which is actually pretty cute. Uh, let's see. Texas and context is. This is. Evista of professional opinion, open dissemination of professional thoughts and opinion in the Colombian coffee axis. Okay. That's too much for me to translate it again. However, against the philosophical naturalism of the social sciences, it's necessary to affirm that culture is rooted in nature. Culture is not built in a virgin birth. Man makes culture, transforming the ecosystem. Nature is part of the culture and culture of nature. It is essential, therefore, to understand human society as an adaptive form. This requires reinterpreting culture, rescuing it from philosophical supernaturalism, but without bringing it too close to biological reductionism. The first aspect that is important to highlight is that related to the determination of the natural environment on social organizations, this determination was openly defended by Greek doctors and later by Montes... Montesquieu and resumed by geographers, sociologists, and some positivist historians such as Buckle and 
Okay. The natural environment is the fundamental premise of societal forma of social formations. However, this influence is not exercised directly as the currents of geographical determinism claim, but through work. It is the material production that establishes the contact between the individual and his environment, and work involves some kind of social organization. The individual is not the spontaneous fruit of the natural environment, nor are institutions the product of individual effort. The individual learns within the social indispensable practices to survive, and develops them as an integral part of the system. Society, therefore, is already constituted as a structure and as a dam of cultural accumulation when the individual begins his relations with the environment. Second aspect that is essential to study from an environmental perspective is the way in which social relations influence the transformation of the environment. The forms of social organization sometimes have an environmental importance equal to or greater than that of the technical tools. As we saw before, the slave system allowed the realization of the great infrastructure works of the agrarian empires. The desiccation of the swamps, the construction of the great hydraulic works, and the cultivation of vast extensions was only possible based on the use of human energy channeled through the slave system. If we look at the environmental impacts of modern development, we can also see the relationships between the deterioration of the environment and the forms of productive or political organization. Modern development cannot be understood without the colonial conquest of the world and without the accumulation of resources in the countries north of the Tropic of Cancer. The colonizing deed of Europe had an environmental significance that is just beginning to be studied. It meant, above all, the annihilation of the native cultures, which had achieved adaptive strategies to the different living conditions, and at the same time, the linking of these populations to productive work, where the extraction of mineral resources or the production of agricultural resources for the export. How to explain without these changes in productive relations the environmental impacts of modern history? Just mention some examples. Mining boosted the deforestation of vast regions and concentrated population in generally low fertile soils. Sugar, which was one of the fundamental products of the colonies, meant the destruction of rainforests in eastern Brazil or in the Caribbean islands and in general left poorly treated soils. One of the most significant environmental problems in the modern world comes from differences in food consumption between the North and South. The protein diet of industrialized countries contrasts with African hunger. Almost all international reports on the environment have warned about this gap. However, it is not a product of technological development, but of the structure of agricultural production itself. The third world countries have been displaced from grain production. 30% of cereal production is dedicated to animal feed worldwide, and in the United States, this proportion rises above 60%. In third world countries, the extension of the agricultural frontier has been mainly the consequence of the expulsion of labor produced by the development of industrial agriculture. Both phenomena are therefore intimately linked. The Green Revolution has resulted in the concentration of agricultural property and in the displacement of peasant labor. Something similar can be said about urbanization processes. In the Third World, the population flow that reaches the cities cannot be absorbed by industrial production and increases the mass of unemployed people or the unproductive activities of informal commerce. All this can be mappified in the urban space by the growth of the slums. There is very little chance this problem can be solved with the productive schemes of the current development style. The urban environment problem is not only reflected in the pollution of the rivers, but also has to do with the social network which the city's activities are built. 
environmental problems cannot be understood as long as the way in which the network of economic and social relations has been woven within the urban perimeter in an intimate relationship with the rural agricultural environment and with the ecosystem environment has not been analyzed. Okay. Chic Freaks Anonymous. Rella's MIDI page. Here you'll find two meg of MIDI files to help support my dad's boring classical guitar page. Don't let my good looks fool you. I'm really a tough cat. Here I am riding tall in the saddle. All right, enough with the horseplay and on with the middies. No. If you'd like to make a call, please hang up and try again. If you need help, hang up and then dial your operator. <laughs> 